How long did you take to achieve such a professional recording level? You know, Cinex, um, I don't even know if professional recording level is the, the right word. I believe that whenever I go and I work with like real engineers, if I can say, like people who learn this at school, what they tell me is, are you doing everything wrong? But it sounds great to me. So the thing is this. The thing is this. The in the world of today and the technology of today, the microphones, the recording things, the plugins, the presets, even the samples that you can download, everything is already like pre pre processed. You actually don't really need to reprocess things. And I believe that in music, the best way to sound great is to just do, 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 and redo. Because I, I don't know about other people, but for me, I hear what I want. I Sometimes I don't know how to arrive there, but I know what I'm, I want. I know how what I'm hearing. So the more you do, and then you compare with the... the, the the best mixes for you the, the, the what is critically excuse me what is critically acclaimed the more you compare your stuff and you, you are able to hear the difference the more you're like okay what is missing in my mix or what didn't i do or why this my why why my kick sounds and their sounds boom boom like why then you start learning then you start trying then you start and at, a point, and at a point, you get it. And sometimes you take your mixes to some professional and you ask them, hey, what do you think about my mix? And they will tell you this, this, this. And you're like, ah, oh, okay, I see. Or they're like, why did you compress the kick? Oh, I don't know, because don't we just always compress the kick? And they're like, no, you compress the kick if it's needed. Oh shit, I thought you had to do it. I said, no, all these samples are already pre-processed. You don't need to reprocess them. Oh. So that's how at a point, once you once you know what is your sound and you know how to get your sound, well, you don't actually don't need people. And this is why, you know, like a lot of the beat makers I work with, for example, Malcolm knows exactly how to mix his instrumentals. So when I get an instrumental from Malcolm, other than redoing the structure if needed, I don't really need to ask him to send me all the separate tracks from his instrumental because they sound great already and some sometimes on a particular song i might ask him the whole thing because uh, i hear a mix that i really want and he's like okay just do it and but most of the time i'm fine with just the stereo track and it really depends from a beat maker to another but uh i tend to now prefer working with people who already mastered their craft to that level where whatever they send me as instrumental i can directly sing on it and i can sing send to mastering send to send to production send to for release and a lot of people they they still believe that something magic has to happen or whatever i don't listen in this world where technology is so advanced now nah, listen you can just let your uh, inspiration do its job and that's it that's the beauty of of the world of today in there <laughs> something interesting that i see with a lot of beat makers is that um they believe that 
they believe that louder is better so when they finish the instrumental they add they add some they add some some uh limiting limiters and, and and they do like a mastering to hear it like very loud it's something i used to do it's something i used to do a lot and one day i went to my mastering engineer uh people Philippe Marcias, uh, a 20 year friend that saw me and from the beginning and one day I'm, you know I'm playing here I'm playing him a bit and of course it's overmastered I was using that plugin from a uh, sound forgot the name always forget the name but listen there was too much bass and it was super squashed very very loud and he's like, yo, like, do you know that when you master it like this, you lose a lot of information? And I'm like, word? He's like, yeah. Like, I said, yeah, but you know, people have to feel it. And he tells me, yeah, but why so loud? And I'm like, yeah, so people can feel it. And then he told me, yeah, listen, you know, uh, everybody in the studio or in their home studios, they have a volume button. If they want to feel it, they will turn up the volume. And I was like, yeah. And starting that, that, at that point, I think it's after Mika's album, I stopped putting a lot of uh, limiter on my instrumentals. Because I used to leave the instrumentals with limiter and then tell the, the singers to to sing on top of those instrumentals so when i hear those albums today people don't hear the difference but i hear the difference like um i think mika mendes uh the first album was the last album where i did that that where all the, the instrumentals have limiters in the instrumental that's the first one where i was like oh i get it and i was like okay i'm gonna leave all that for the mastering you don't need to do this when you are recording. And that's when I, I when I listened to, to, to Mika's first album, I listened to the instrumentals and I'm like, oh my God, all the mistakes I did in the mix. Because yeah, I, want, I wanted everything to be loud, but actually you don't need to. And what I do when I want to hear loud, I turn up the volume here on my, uh, on my, uh, on my Apollo here. I turn up this loud to the max uh, and that's it. That's all I need actually to hear it the way I want to hear it, especially when I'm mixing. I mix super loud in my headphones so I can really hear the what I want. And then something that I learned that is very interesting is that when you turn down the sound very, very low and now you listen to your, your song with just your instrumental you listen to your instrumental very low you have to ask yourself am i hearing everything like is everything distinct because if you put too much bass it's gonna eat the kicks it's gonna eat everything that is in the low if you put too much stuff up there in the the brilliance it's gonna eat everything and you, you're not gonna leave space for the vocals because the vocals need to be in the medium and in the highs right and all this is, you have to understand that in, in the spectrum of sound, you have the basses here, here is the medium and here is the highs. So here you're gonna have the bass and the kick. The, the kick usually is here, like poof, poof, poof. And then the bass takes a little bit more. The bass takes like maybe all this zone from the low low to this, so boom, 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 boom. So, those two are already fighting the the bass plus the kick they have to so you have to find a place where your kick and your bass are not conflicting with each other and for that you need to choose the right kick with the right bass so if you have a kick that is very boom boom 
You cannot add a bass that is boom, boom as well. It doesn't work. If you have a bass that is very subby, like boom, you need a kick that goes pa, pa. So both goes well together and they all occupy a different space of the spectrum. Then you have your snare. Your snare has to go somewhere. Ta. Then you have all the percussions. They have to not take the space of the snare. And then you have to leave some space when you are listening to your kick, your snare and your bass. Just those three. It has to sound amazing already. And it doesn't have to sound amazing because everything is in the red. Everything has to be in a nice thing. But when you crank up the volume, it has to sound like boom, boom, boom. You need to. And so this is always how I start a mix. Then I start adding hi hats, shakers, all the everything that is in the high frequencies. I start adding them and making sure that they are not taking too much space because I know that I'm going to add the vocals. And it's very interesting when you are a singer and a beat maker and also the person who mix, you understand that everything you are doing is going is, is to gonna, um, gonna influence what is coming after that. So you really have to understand how it works. And um, that's how I start slowly understanding all these techniques of of mixing music and, and by mixing albums one after the other, mixing all these artists and, you know, going to the studio, asking questions, learning stuff on online. And uh, then you learn how to, you know, how to balance. It's called the balancing, how to to not put your your your, your strings. You know, you, you must be able to listen to your 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 kick, snare, bass, I hat shakers, triangle, percussions, bass, uh, electric piano, plus strings, plus whatever electronic thing you put there. Everything has to be together and still not be on top of each other. And uh, then you start learning some very interesting techniques like uh, um, there's, a, there's a technique called... Um, the side chain. When I learned side chain, I was like, "What?" Like, I have a plugin uh, called Q3 for the for the mixing. And when so, what is a side chain? Is that one instrument will trigger an equalization. So let's say, for example, you have a kick that goes right, but you also have a bass that go boom. Imagine that every time that the kick goes pa, you have the the low part of the bass where the kick goes, that part, that part of the EQ goes down. Not the whole bass, the, the medium part of the bass continue to be there, but the, the low part where there's a conflict lose like 30% of value. So then every time there's the kick, the bass leaves some space here. Continues to sound here, continues to sound here, but here in the middle where the kick goes, everything goes like this every time the kick. So this is called side chaining. And Daft Punk, for example, the Daft Punk, they use a lot of side chaining. This is that sound that you hear when it goes in the house music, when it goes like, so this is called side chain. You can even like, for example, you can put a side chain in the whole mix where even in the chorus, every time every time the kicks arrive, everything goes a little bit low. Those techniques are advanced mixing techniques. Actually, I, I would do a, a studio session where we maybe we can talk about this. I can show you some stuff. But that was super interesting how uh, when I start learning about those techniques, I realized that depending on who's instrumental and mixing because minds I already know what to do because I know the sounds that I, I choose from the beginning but sometimes you're gonna have beat makers they don't choose the, the right sound sometimes and when I finish mixing their beats they're like damn what happened to my beat this is amazing and I'm like ah sometimes you know a little bit of side chain a little bit of transforming your kick with the EQ to be a little more dynamic to let the bass go in the low in the back and the kick a little bit there and all this you can achieve in the mix when you start understanding what you do but all of us because we don't go to school uh, we just do it to do it 
when we arrive in the when we arrive in the in the in the studio we just touch everything we just put a bunch of plugin in there and we think yeah it sounds great and then you're like yeah aggressive aggressive and you put some limiters you you do mastering you put the sound too loud thinking that yeah it sounds hard actually your mix has to sound amazing without nothing without mastering without uh, limiting uh, uh, limiting i use it really when i have a for example let's say that my whole uh, drum section is going everywhere and I need to have to control the, the the highs and lows I put a limiter but mild one on the bus of the drum that's where I can achieve that the rest of the time that's not what I do I would just don't put nothing and make things sound great not by the plugins but but by the way I balance and this is the secret of my sound. It is very well balanced. That's why it sounds how it sounds. But I don't put limiters. I, I don't actually. I never mix my kick, snares. I don't mix them. I don't put EQ. I don't put nothing. They sound great already because I choose my sound to be good. And it's very important to to be able to have sounds that sounds great like this. Because then and and to always remember somebody will sing on them so you need to also leave some frequencies free for the singers that's why sometimes i hear some beats and i'm like yeah bro too much instruments too much stuff there's no space to sing no here you can sing no there's no space like you're asking me to 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 be in the forest my voice will not come out with all these instruments remove this that 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 and this is this is something you learn as you make beats of course you know 